This is Flynn. He's from the Philippines, and he reached out to me to show me this knot. Now I'm posting this with his permission, and he has a genius modification for the automatic trucker's hitch. He uses it for the boxes that he carries on a regular basis for his trolley. And he starts off with the loop that's passed through the bottom, as you saw. And he'll pick up the end, thumbs down grip, twist around, and grab your tensioning side. Go around your secondary anchor point, and now here's where the magic happens. He goes through the loop, and instead of going through a second time, like I would normally show you, he goes around the other portion of the rope, and that creates the automatic locking hitch. Here's another view. I'll need to tie a loop in the end of my rope so I can tie off to my axle here. I don't know exactly which loop he used, but I'm going to go with my favorite, the angler's loop. We'll go around the back, around the front, around the back again, and now this free end is going to lay over the top, and now our bottom loop is going to go through our top loop. So I'll just adjust it here, go through the top, and pull everything tight. There we go. If you pay attention to Flynn's video, he grabs the cord with his right hand and his left hand, he gives a thumbs down grip. He twists it counterclockwise and then he grabs the end that he's gonna tension. Now it's important we do it this way because if we were to do it the opposite way, the loop would not work how we want it to. Right here we have our tensioning end it collapses when we pull it. And when we have it hooked onto the other side, the tension will equal out and it will not collapse the loop. Now, if we were to form our loop facing the opposite direction, I'll go down towards the box, down again and pull out my slip knot. Now, when we pull in our tension, it would pull from the anchor side and this would collapse our loop. And so here's what would happen. We would pull in our tension our loop would collapse and then friction would work against us. Just like Flynn did, thumbs down grip, I'll twist around and then I'll grab the rope on my tensioning side. We'll pull that tight. Now normally I would take my rope and I'd run it through the loop once and then twice. And then it's important for me to place this loop on the right side so that when I pull in my tension, it locks down on itself. Now the genius in what Flynn did is when he goes through the loop, he includes the other portion of the rope. So I'll go through once, I'll go around the rope, and then back through this window. And now you've taken out the mistake of ending up on the wrong side of your loop, and it locks down exceptionally well. Here it is one more time. I'll go through my loop. And now I have this window here on the left side of my loop. I'll go around the rope and then back through that window. And now I'm using the rope to support my locking hitch. I don't have a whole lot of tension here, but undoing it is just the same. I'll take a bite, place it through that window there, and then pull it back the opposite direction. I think this dolly here makes a great place for a three-point bowline. I don't want my rope slipping around, so I'm actually going to anchor it to the two poles on either side. Now that I've gone around both supports, I want to leave enough length to tie in my bowline. I'll include my working end into my grip, and now I'll let that slip along as I pull the center of my loop into my grip as well. I'll let that go. Now I'll tie in my bowline by turning in a loop. I'll go up the hole, around the tree, and then back down again. 
From here, I'll center my loop. I'll grab onto the center back here. And this is where I'll tie in my sheep end. I'll go through, around, and then back underneath. Now we have a knot that's gonna stay centered. All right, let's see if we can do this as fast as Flynn does. Go around, pull in our loop, go in and around and through. There we go. How do you say that's not going anywhere in Tagalog? <laughs>